Hi there, this is Alana. You're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm here with my friend and co-host and very own prayer partner, Jamie. How's it going, Jamie? Great. I love your little, like, pump your arms up. Pump oh my gosh, I should show you how many mosquito bites I've got on my arms. Oh, it's no. really bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, they're bad. Fun. I don't know if this year is worse than other years. I, it feels like it at our house. It's okay. Like, oh. Yeah, you, yeah, feels like it here too, for mm-hmm. sure. Anyway, what's new? What's going well in your life? Hmm. We are, oh, one really cool thing. So, my oldest plays hockey and they all three play hockey, but my oldest really is the only one skating right now at any, Mm -hmm. for any length of time. And he's doing like a, a small group skating thing. And Mm -hmm. he's realizing his endurance isn't really, his conditioning is kind of off because he's not skating as much as usual. So Mm -hmm. he decided he wanted to start jogging and he asked me to be his jogging partner. And I don't really, I, I would say I like running better than like stationary bike or okay. treadmill or anything mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. But like the fact that he asked me to run with him, I was like, wow, that's exciting. Like, that'll be great because I, you know, it's, it's not like I love that's running, cool. but running with mm-hmm. him, it's fun. So we did it the first time yesterday morning and then he had a early morning hockey practice this morning. And so we didn't get to it yet, but we're going to do it today before the end of the day. So it's nice. Cool I've got an accountability partner now. Yeah. How far yeah. did you go? <laughs> very small. Very, I don't, I don't even know. Cause I wasn't wearing my watch to know, okay. but we ran yeah, through the yeah. neighborhood and up to the school and then around the little, like the little loop. It was not yeah. far. We started small. He could have, and it's funny cause he's taller than me now and his legs are disproportionately longer than mine. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Even more so cause right, right. legs are proportionally longer. So his stride is so far and I feel like I'm a little kid running next to him. Like, so he really, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm inspired to try and get better just so I can not hold him back (laughs) because he could go way farther than I could, but it's fun. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, we'll both maybe get in better shape or maybe just me because he's probably like, whatever. Or you'll both get like really overheated. (laughs) That could happen too. will get lots of shin splints. Do you know the marble trick with shin splints? No, I've never heard okay. that. So when I was in high school, I was on the palm squad and shin splints was something we had to worry about quite a bit. And so what you do. I didn't know you were a palm. So I know I a lot of things girl, about you. Yeah. I don't think I knew you were a palm. That's really? Cool. I'm surprising you didn't know that. Okay. So what you do is you get marbles and you get a jar and you just sit down comfortably and you pick up one marble at a time with your toes and drop it into the jar and it really works on like elongating the shin muscle or tendon or whatever it is oh. it gets uh, shortened i'm doing feels that really now. good yeah i'm mm-hmm. like going through that motion and i can feel that mm-hmm. shin area working that's great yeah love it can you hear my dog whining yeah she's in the other room yeah we're we're figuring out the acoustics in this house it's just so different um not even just for podcasting just in like you know calling the kids for dinner and mm-hmm. things like that um So sorry about that. I think she sees one of the boys playing outside and is heartbroken that she has not been invited. (laughs) Oh, I think that's what's going on. Poor thing. Well, this is the Praying Christian Women podcast. So should we open with the word of prayer? I guess. I mean, if we have to. (laughs) If I've got to pull your arm or twist your arm, pull your, pull your teeth. I don't know. I don't know what I'm pulling, but I'll twist. I'll twist and pull. Twist and pull and I will pray. (laughs) All right. Sounds good. God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this day and just the opportunity to talk about spiritual warfare. God, we just pray that you would cover this episode in your power and in protection. Just even the topic of spiritual warfare is um, something we don't go into lightly. We just pray that you would open our eyes to your truth today, that um, you would just guide our conversation and help us to learn And just kind of talk about ways that we can create a battle plan um, to to take offensive action against the enemy. And um, we just thank you that you give us weapons, Lord. You don't just fight our battles for us. You give us weapons and you allow us to join in the battle. Thank you for that. And we just pray that you would do that even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our verse of the day today is from 
2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 and 5. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And I love this verse. It feels so powerful. Like when I quote this, you know, like when I'm like, we demolish arguments and Mm -hmm. every pretension, you know, it just feels powerful. And, but the first part of this, the weapons we fight with have divine power to demolish strongholds. And like, I would love to do kind of an extended word study on strongholds and what it, what the original meaning was. But from what I understand from reading it in the past, Um, I mean, this is in the New Testament, so it would probably be a Greek word, but like stronghold is, I mean, we, we talk about it in spiritual warfare terms a lot of times to be Mm -hmm. like something that, that binds us, you know, like a a spiritual stronghold is something that, that holds us or, but the literal word stronghold is like, like somewhere you hide in war. You know, like mm-hmm. the, like when David mm-hmm. held, like was in the stronghold, like he he, he hid in the mm-hmm. stronghold to protect mm-hmm. himself from being seen. Or like if you're in war, the stronghold is like your bunker, kind of where you like hide. Right, right. And um, so I don't know. I I see strongholds also as like I don't know. I almost wonder if strongholds could be like a a hiding place for the enemy, even like to demolish that, like to expose mm-hmm. the enemy. As right, well as right. In his own territory. Maybe. Kind of I don't yeah. know. But I, I can't back that up by like word study. But stronghold for sure. Anything that, that binds us or holds us, you know, in sin. Yeah. Anyway. I love that. Yeah. And our weapons have the divine power to demolish those strongholds. That's right. wonderful to remember. It is. So All our, right. Yeah. I guess let's do our just for fun. Oh, yeah. So before we you get into it. it. Oh. Okay. Um, I'm ready. All right. Well, so we've talked about the movie, The War Room before. So what's your mm-hmm. favorite scene from the movie, The War Room? <laughs> I think it might be the one with the, um, there's two. There's the one where she's like yelling at Satan, which I know you referenced, but I also uh, really I love like, that one. I love the running thing about her stinky feet. I just think that that's cute and funny. <laughs> so that is. there's, there's that too. I do. I think it is kind of cute. It just kind of lightens up the movie. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I think my favorite scene is the one where she goes out and just calls out Satan and just Mm -hmm. yells at him. Another one of my favorite scenes though, is where, is it Miss Clara? Is that her name? I think so. The older woman, Mm -hmm. Miss Clara comes in and gives her her, is it coffee or tea? Like gives her coffee Mm -hmm. and it didn't taste good because it was lukewarm and she's like, right. Oh, you don't like lukewarm coffee? Well, God yeah. doesn't like lukewarm <laughs> believers. Yeah, yeah. That she had it. some. She had some sass for sure. She did. And then another part, which I like. You know, we're going through all the parts, but the one where she talks about, like, you know, will you stop complaining about your husband and start praying for him? Like, what's? Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's so many good. That's a wonderful. Oh, movie. the other one I love is where she's in her closet, which she's trying to convert to her prayer room. But she, like, it's going through all the things she's trying to do to get comfortable. And then it shows her daughter peeking in, like, she's just sitting, like, with a bag of potato chips. Yeah. She's having <laughs> some quiet time. That's right. And she, she's not, like, sweet about it either. She's like, go away. Like, this yeah. is my quiet time. Like, <laughs> gnarling while she guards uh-huh. her chips. Yep. That was funny. Well, kind of a, like, I don't know, sneak preview, unless this airs after, but a sneak preview is, okay, all right, this is a long, long version, background of how this particular episode came about. Is this story time? Do we need our little carpet squares? Everybody pick a, everybody pick a, pick a circle or whatever. How does it go? Oh, you have a song? There's a song, pick your color, whatever. So pick your color, sit down and listen, children. So, (laughs) um, so. One of the podcasts I listen to is called Crystal's Chronicles, and it's Crystal Evans Hurst, who is Priscilla Shirer's sister. Is it Shirer or Shearer? Shire. I've always said Shirer, but I've Me actually too. never heard it spoken. So I, I haven't know. either, but I've always said Shirer. So anyway, Crystal Evans Hurst, um, her she is Priscilla Shirer's sister. So they're both Tony Evans' daughters, and I love this podcast and. 
when I was listening to it the other day, I've been listening to it more because we get to interview her. She gets to come on the show. Um, I'm actually going to do, we're going to have our conversation tomorrow, but according to when we're recording this, I don't know when it's going to be. And when it's going to be text. Aired. Right. Yeah. Time for text. Yeah. We were talking at some about point that. you will or will not have interviewed. You may or may <laughs> so not. Yes. Yeah. You may or may not hear an interview from the person known as Crystal Evans. But Wait, I was is this going to be spoilers? Do we need to give a spoiler alert? To it's anything? not. No, it's not at all. The, I just happened to be, I was listening more to her podcast so I could just kind of, you know, kind of get to know her a little before talking to her. To her. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, she had Lisa Turkhurst on her podcast and it was a great, it was, it was episode 222 of Crystal's Chronicles. So if you want to look that up, but it was last July and they were talking about Satan's attack plan. And I was just kind of riveted because obviously nobody really knows Satan's attack plan. Even, you know, C.S. Lewis has the screw tape letters and mm -hmm. we've got like these books mm -hmm. speculating what his plans are. But Lisa Turkhurst had this cool like three-step attack plan that she has discerned like just a pattern in her own life and in, in people she's talked to of three different things that's, that Satan does to kind of ensnare us and, and take us down. So I was thinking it would be really cool to take this Satan's battle plan and mm -hmm. create our own offensive prayer, like preemptive battle plan. So I like that. that's where this came from. That so, sounds really cool. Yeah. Which is funny though, because I didn't intend for the question, what's your favorite scene from the movie, The War Room, to have anything to do with Crystal, but it does because her sister was it in it. Her si Priscilla was in The War Room. Coming full circle. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All See, right. that's when you're supposed to just like pretend that you had that planned all along. Yeah. You come no. across looking smarter that way. Okay, but it's <laughs> too late. Too late for that. You know what made me think about you and me and this podcast? I was listening to this book. It's called The Happiness Project. Mm -hmm. And this woman kind of goes on this year long quest to just like research the science behind happiness. Like, what is it? Blah, blah, blah. And she talked about how like, I'm going to mess up numbers. So I'm just going to invent numbers. She talked about how like a toddler will spontaneously laugh like hundreds of times a day. And the typical adult only laughs maybe like five or 10 times a day. Like if she's me, lucky. I mean, I'm yeah. thinking like, man, that's too bad. Yeah. And so it made me think about our show and like in the course of one episode, like we definitely get like at least a dozen laughs in, I'm sure an episode. So we're, we're well on our way to being happy people. <laughs> I like that. No, we definitely do. Uh, that's one thing I love is that we, yeah. And even when we're not on the podcast, we laugh a lot when we're talking. So we do. Thing. We do. I like it. All righty. So what's this, uh, what's this battle plan? So the attack plan that Lisa outlined was just three basic steps. And I thought we could kind of, I'll just give you what they are. And then we can kind of talk through maybe some examples. But um, one of them is one, two, oh. So on my notes, it's kind of messed up, but it only is three, three steps. So step one is temptation, which she says is often attached to disappointment. So we can talk about an example of that, but your temptation comes often it's attached to a disappointment um, mm -hmm. that kind of mm -hmm. primes you to be ready for sin. The second one is deception. And it's kind of like the, you've been through so much, you deserve this. You're spiritually mature. You could handle this. You know, maybe other people can't handle taking this liberty, but you know, it's not explicit in the Bible that it's not okay. So mm -hmm. you can handle mm -hmm. this. So yeah, so there's temptation, deception, and then um, accusation, where he, Satan flips the script. So this kind of happens after you've sinned, and it's shame, and I am the problem, or you label yourself, or you're like a victim. How could God possibly love me? How could other people accept me if they only knew? Isolation, all of that. So it's really just a three-step process. and the deception is the precursor and then following that. And if you're looking at the show notes, Alana, it's, it's kind of the numbering is funny, but deception, okay. accusation, uh, it's, I'm sorry. Uh, 
yeah, deception. Temptation. Yeah, temptation, deception, and accusation. Yeah, which really feels like it follows the timeline of the fall, right? You know, because yeah. the, the devil showed up. I think mm-hmm. that, you know, I think an argument could be made, which comes first, temptation or deception. I, sometimes mm-hmm. they probably are exactly at the same time. And then right. for sure, the accusation. Look what you just did. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in going through this, that is, if that's the plan... You know, maybe we can, and you know what, maybe Lisa Turkhurst has already done this somewhere. So we have not seen that or done that, but. Oh um, no, this is her, yeah, her but framework. Yeah, this is her framework and we're just kind of launching mm-hmm. off of it. So I'm thinking, first of all, it might be, maybe we could pick like a generic example and take it through each of these. Aw, hi coffee. I can see her little oh, head. Can you see her back there? Right yeah, in yeah, the she, corner. What a sweet puppy. Yeah. She's a good dog. She is. She is a good dog. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Like a generic example that we could sort of talk through all these different steps and what we could do, or do you want to bring in a whole bunch of different things or make it personal? That sounds, let's make it as personal and juicy as possible. All right. I like that. All right. (laughs) That's what people really tune in for. (laughs) Yeah. The, the, uh, whatever the, what do you call them? Confessions. The confessions. The confessions. The confessions. That's right. We should just change the whole name to a, uh, you know, it was funny. It's not confessions. a show. Go ahead. It's not a show I regularly listen to, but I was actually researching this specific like family disorder for one of my novels. Mm-hmm. And I found this entire podcast. I guess there's a whole like niche of podcasting where it's like family secrets. So people get on and anonymously like talk about all their deepest, darkest secrets. It could be like, I listened to the one episode about the one issue because I needed the research, but Mm -hmm. like the entire podcast, it's so voyeuristic. I could see it being cathartic, you know, for the person talking. Right. People listening. It's like, oh, yikes. Why would you (laughs) listen to all of these? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But hey, hey, no shame. I'm the one who listens to like true crime podcasts daily about people getting maimed and stuff. So, but you know, that is also research. So it is, it has an end game. Well, I was thinking we could be the, it could be the confessions of a praying Christian woman podcast or confessions of praying Christian women podcast. Yeah, I think it should be secret confessions because I found if you have the word secret, it sounds a lot juicier. Well, not to mention <laughs> SEO. We want it to be searchable and that's like right, that's extra right. juicy. Wouldn't it be funny if like for our patrons on Patreon, we like made it and you also get our exclusive once a month, <laughs> Amy and Alana tell all. <laughs> you get our worst confessions that our that's general right. audience doesn't get. Hey, I've got a confession for you. I killed, no joke, 50 mosquitoes this morning just in my bedroom because Aww. the screen in our new room, it's, it's not totally broken, but it does have like a little gap and we haven't fixed it yet. And yeah, 50 mosquitoes murdered those little suckers, those literal suckers, and do not feel guilty about it. Do you know what makes me feel kind of bad? Ever since I found out that it's only the female mosquitoes that suck blood because they're mm-hmm. wanting to take it back to their babies, like that kind of makes me feel a little bad. Like I'm picturing all the poor nope. mosquito babies. Mom, where are you? Nope. See, for me, I kill a mosquito. We've got one of the zappers and they're so fun because they make like this electric popping sound when they get oh, them. Oh, nice. And not only do I think about like, I'm still not thinking about things in the same way you are that I'm like, not only did I just kill you, I killed all of your potential offspring. So that's, that's how bad I am. Told you we were going to get juicy. (laughs) I literally and figuratively, because when you smash the mosquito. It can get, yeah. All right. (laughs) I'm still listening, but let me take the dog out so she doesn't whine. Okay. Alrighty. We're back. So if we look at this prayer strategy, so let's, let's look at the first, so temptation. What I thought was interesting was she's talking about it's often attached to a disappointment. So I'm thinking of an example. And I know for me, like if it's laziness, if I know, okay, I'm, I'm being lazy about stuff. I need to get up earlier. I need to, you know, when I have downtime, I need to be using it constructively, um, you know, things like that. If there's a disappointment, like if I'm, whatever the disappointment is, like if I'm, if I'm feeling unappreciated, then that might be a trigger 
for me to say, well, you know what? I'm not appreciated anyway. I'm just going to sit here and scroll through social media because, you know, I, I deserve it. I deserve that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. time off or not saying that that's sinful, but right. it, could, it could be if it's done it rebelliously and intentionally when I know I'm called to be doing something specific. Um, that might not be the best example. Oh, I know. Or kids. This is something I've been short with my kids, not speaking life into them. I've been critical Mm -hmm. and I hear it coming out of my mouth. And so I find very often that when I, like if, if my husband and I are having a conflict and I'm kind of like irritated with that, Mm -hmm. it trickles down and I sort of take it out on the kids. Like I, and my husband even called it out the other day, like in a humble way, like he said, I said something to him and he kind of snapped back and uh, he said something to me that was like, I don't know. And and I just stopped talking. I didn't like, Mm -hmm. you know, but then the kids said something and I was kind of snarky to them where I had not been like that before. And he said, you know what? I'm sorry. You're being short with the kids because of the way that I responded to you. Let's start over. Like, I thought that was cool. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Sometimes you need that like family reset button. Yeah. My kids use that sometimes. They're like, can we just start over or can we hit the reset button? Yeah. It's important. You know, what we do for reset often is just something really funny. It's often just funny animal videos, just getting Mm -hmm. a little bit of laughter, getting the tension out and just kind of wiggling it all out. Sometimes that's, that's what you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you think of any other examples? I'm still a little confused. Maybe isn't the right word, but I'm still not totally convinced how disappointment and temptation go hand in hand. Do you have like other examples, like what she would say to that? I I do. Cause I think what's on her mind is she was coming out of some infidelity issues with her husband. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know that she was maybe in her mind thinking about how, like if he has had infidelity issues in the past, that maybe being disappointed you know, or just in general, anyone, anyone where in where the temptation to be unfaithful is an issue. Um, if you have a disappointment in your marriage, like let's say mm-hmm. your spouse lets you down and right, you were right. planning, then you'll be tempted. To then you would be tempted to just like seek comfort in that sin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I could see that. Yeah. Let me think of another. Um, I don't know, like if you're at work and uh, you're tempted to, this is just random, let's say you're tempted to steal from your employer or like, mm-hmm. or, mm-hmm. you know, something and you get let down at work or you find out that you didn't mm-hmm. get the right you wanted, then maybe that temptation would you come. You justify like, it, right? You justify it like, well, I'm disappointed about this. So I mm-hmm. don't know, but maybe what I'm thinking she's saying in general though is, When we feel disappointed, we want to take solace and comfort in something. And Mm -hmm. sometimes that temptation to take comfort, I mean, I do it with food sometimes or coffee Mm -hmm. where, you know, like, like specialty coffee drinks as I Mm -hmm. sit here and drink my coffee, I was out of milk. (laughs) And of course, you know, rather than going to the store to get milk, I ran to the coffee coffee cart to get coffee. (laughs) um, But I wasn't disappointed about anything. But mm-hmm. I do have that, like, taking comfort in food when I feel yeah. disappointed or taking mm-hmm. comfort in For sure. maybe a shopping addiction. You know, I've known people that have yeah. struggled with that. and When you're stressed or, yeah. I think that, you know, maybe there are disappointments, one of a few things, you know, whether it's stress or disappointment or even mm-hmm. like what we were talking about last time we recorded, you know, just not getting enough sleep, not feeling totally right. I think those all make us more susceptible to some of those types of temptations for sure. Yeah. And, um, it, and it doesn't say always attached to a temptation, to a disappointment. Mm-hmm, there, temptations mm-hmm. can come on any. Yeah. yeah. But there definitely is this sense of it's easier to justify, you know, well, I'm, I'm stuck at home and really stressed out because we're in a lockdown. So it's okay for me to eat twice what I normally would. You know, right. that's, it's a very easy excuse to make. Yeah. So if we look at that and think, okay, if, if the first step is temptation, mm-hmm. what can a prayer strategy be 
before that temptation hits or just even a spiritual strategy? What can we do to anticipate that? I think noticing, just like checking in with yourself on how you're doing is really going to help. If you're in the habit of just plowing through your day, you're not going to notice as much whether you're tired or like I get grumpy when I'm hungry. Like, and it's a physiological thing. It's a blood sugar thing. Like Mm -hmm. I get to where if I haven't had anything to eat in a long enough time, like I get the sweats, I get confused. Like it's, it's a true physiological thing, but that's Mm -hmm. still not a good excuse to be grumpy and mean to people. And so I think one of the things to do is just kind of note where your weaknesses Mm -hmm. might be. You know, if you're not feeling well, if you're tired, if you're disappointed about something. I know for me, just the, the act of moving, like I just, I feel heavier. I don't feel a hundred percent comfortable in our new home. It doesn't feel like home yet. And you know me, like I'm all about feeling cozy at home. So I know that I'm not, I know that that's an area where I'm susceptible to temptation. Or like in your example, you know that someone spoke to you sharply. So you just recognize that you're more susceptible to the temptation to to talk to others. And I think, you know, I think that is a kind of prayerful attitude. If we talk about just noting as being more mindful of what's going on and sort of lifting those emotions to God, like, Mm -hmm acknowledging them before God. I re-listened to our episode on prayers of lament. And that was one of the really big takeaways that I got from it was just, you know, acknowledging how you're feeling in a Mm -hmm. prayerful way. You're not asking God to change how you feel. You're not making apologies for how you feel. You're just recognizing how you feel. And I think that can be a good way because once you are more aware of how you're doing, you're going to be more aware of this specific type of temptations that are going to come. Like my arms are itching because like I literally have dozens of mosquito bites. I know that's like my tendency is then to get grumpy. Yeah. I mean, like, why do we ever move? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so just kind of noticing those things and acknowledging them, I think is a good first step. I think so too. And the noticing, because, you know, just like you said, if you plow through your day and you're busy, busy, mm. busy, and you're not doing any checking in with yourself, yeah. mm-hmm. you're not going to catch it. Have you ever accidentally recorded yourself talking to the kids or like sometimes I'll be um, like one of the kids will take a, a movie of something that's funny while I'm mm-hmm. having a conversation mm-hmm. in the background and I'll play it back later and I'll be like, uh-huh. oh, yeah, I don't, I wasn't talking so nice to the kids or right um, you just you know and that as you can say as you can see that's one of my big themes lately is just the way I talk to the kids the way I respond Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it becomes a pattern that just you don't even notice it you don't even feel it so yeah checking in with yourself is definitely good Mm -hmm. um and recognizing those triggers recognizing the disappointments like let's say you work with someone that you've been noticing is really nice. And you kind of in the back of your mind are like, hmm, I wish my husband was more like that. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't seem- Noticing that right away. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, yeah, or you go to church and the same guy compliments you. I mean, I heard actual Mm -hmm. story about a woman, woman in one of the interviews that we had where she said there was a man at church and he was, he would always compliment me on what I was wearing and it wasn't, you know, sexual or coming on to her. Creepy, yeah. But- she, her husband didn't attend church. And Mm -hmm. so she would think, oh, here's a guy. He goes to church. He's single. Mm -hmm. He -hmm. likes the way I'm dressing. He thinks I get all the what ifs. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So finding out, like she knew that there was a trigger there every time she went to church. So she ended up confessing to her husband, even though nothing had happened. She had never Mm -hmm. even so much as like hugged the guy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, but she confessed to her husband that that was happening so that that was an accountability and so that she anticipated that trigger. And she actually, I don't know if she ever went to the man and said, look, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be rude by ignoring you. It's just, I don't know if this is an appropriate. It's a little, yeah. Yeah. Or if she just started ignoring him, I don't remember what happened. Well, how about um, this to our myriad single male listeners probably don't compliment married women at church on how they look. Let's just 
you know, not Just a rule. Leave but it at that. A suggestion. <laughs> no, it really is. And yeah. And I'm sure he meant well. I mean, I, I absolutely want to give him the benefit of the doubt, but no, well, I get it. For or sure. maybe not. So it doesn't, yeah, you don't know. Ooh, you do want to get juicy on this show. I do. I do. He was, no. <laughs> He knew what no, she I, needed to hear. No, it very well could have been. He could have told every woman that he came across, you know, there's some really polite people out there. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And there is nothing that's going to nip that in the bed, like confessing it to your husband. I did that once we were brand newlywed and it wasn't even a confession. Like I basically, my confession was, I realized that this is the kind of guy that before I met you, I would have had a crush on. And I was so embarrassed to even say that. And he just, he was so sweet. He kind of laughed and he's like, yeah, that just means you've got good taste. Cause it was a friend of his. He's like, Aww. yeah, I mean, all it means is that you've got a good taste in men and I'm glad I've got you. <laughs> but you know, as soon as you say that out loud, like to your husband, especially there's no way that <laughs> that's going to continue. No, because then, you know, it, even though he's kind of, he, he was really nice about it, but he's got it in mm -hmm. his mind. So he's going to yeah, be, yeah. I mean, and it, it truly was a nothing, but saying it out loud, kept it from turning into what might've turned into something slightly, a tiny bit bigger than nothing, you yeah. know? Well, and I think that if your temptation has anything to do with a person of the opposite sex and you are married um, or they're married, I think, but yeah, if you're married, just getting in the habit of talking that way with your spouse. Cause once you open that door to that kind of conversation, it makes mm -hmm. it easier oh, and, it, sure. and it doesn't seem so scary to have that conversation once you've had it a few times. And yeah, you know, yeah. like my husband and I, like I know what actresses he finds attractive. He knows what actors I find attractive. And it's not, it's not a weird, like, why can't you look like this guy? It's just, this right. is this is the kind of person I notice, and it's never brought up in a creepy way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've even <laughs> the one he makes the most fun of me for is when I actually told him I had a girl crush on someone. I'm like, I think she's adorable, and he's like, You've got a girl crush, don't you? I'm like, Well, I don't think so. I just think she's cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, some you know, and not every relationship's gonna be able to talk through those things and have it not be weird. You know, but if you can talk about it, it's kind of nice to have it not be weird. It is, and I think that's true for any any of those temptations, particularly if they are triggered by mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a disappointment or, oh, for or sure. un yeah. unsatisfaction, unsatisfaction, Dis dissatisfaction. Dis <laughs> I can't get no satisfaction. Um, what was I going to say? What's the verse in first John where it talks about like things that are hidden kind of, this is totally the paraphrase, but things that are hidden remain unexposed. And then when you expose them, it kind, it really does break down their power. And yes. so whether that's confessing to a person involved in this, or like if I were to come to you and say, Jamie, yikes, I, I noticed this guy at church and I'm thinking about him too much, even just confessing it to someone else, I think definitely helps it from becoming a bigger thing. It does. And isolation is something, and that comes up in our like accusation number three, mm -hmm. but, um, but isolation is such a powerful tool of the enemy. Like it is For when sure. you feel isolated or when you feel like your thoughts are insulated, then mm -hmm. it's a very unhealthy, it's like recirculating air in an airplane and just all the germs yeah, gross. constantly that recirculating. So disgusting right now. <laughs> it is without anything to like breathe yeah, no fresh filter. air. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. So open up the windows, air out the cabin, mm -hmm. <laughs> air your dirty laundry. Don't air, air the dirty, dirty laundry. laundry. Air your own dirty laundry. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but finding an accountability partner, if it's something that's a, a consistent thing, um, then finding an accountability partner to specifically ask you, and you have to tell the person, please ask yeah. me about this every time we talk. Because yeah. I've been in situations where I've had things I've wanted to be checked in on, or other people have wanted to be, me to check in on them about, mm -hmm. and one or the other of us has been kind of reluctant to specifically yeah. ask, you know, because you don't want to yeah. be a pain. Specifically oh, yeah. ask, hey, ask me about X, Y, or Z every time we talk so that I can, you know, yeah. spill the beans if there are beans to spill. Oh, yeah, spill all those beans. I think sometimes if it's a a very, um, what's what I'm looking for? Like something that is shameful to talk about. I've actually heard of accountability partners even using code words mm -hmm. being like, Hey, Jamie, I've 
I, I can't even think of something off the top of my head. Like I've yelled at the monkey this, this week. <laughs> And nobody who's listening is going to know what that means. But sometimes like if it's, if it's something that's that just hidden and shameful, sometimes it's actually easier to call it by something else. And I think eventually like sin needs to be called sin for sure. But when you're just getting used to using those words and that language, or are you asking me like, Hey, Alana, how's the monkey doing? <laughs> like, Yeah. Hasn't been a great week with the monkey. And we know what that means. Yeah. It can feel a little safer. Yeah, no, I think that's definitely a good idea too. Yeah. What are your thoughts on your spouse being your accountability partner? Mm, I think you need another one too, because, mm -hmm. I, but I, I mean, I think it's good for certain things, but um, I don't know. I feel like it's better. I feel like there is so much in a marriage that you need to be accountable to that you mm -hmm. need someone outside of it. Yeah. We haven't had amazing luck because it's either going to... Um, like it can come across as nagging right. or things like that. Like I know every once in a while, my husband knows that I'm, I'm not trying, I'm trying to maintain my weight and not gain, which during a pandemic and a move and stressful time is hard. And so he knows that. And every so often he'll mention things like, yeah, did, did you really mean to get up and eat that bowl of ramen last night? <laughs> And it's not um, I know, I know he means well, and it, it never turns into like a fight or something, but it just, that's, that's not helpful. And, and same thing with me doing the same to him. Like there yeah. would never, there's not a good way for me to do that without coming across as nagging or especially if what's being held in account has to do with purity or things like that. There's right. no way to divorce yourself from like, I can't ask my husband, so, you know, did you check out that pretty girl in the store without it, without it being about me, <laughs> you know, right. and it shouldn't or, be, it should be about him. Yeah. And I just, and I think that like, like, let's say there's a marriage and pornography is an issue that would mm -hmm. be so personal that there's no, that I can't imagine. It's not an easy way to just be, oh, by the way, counselor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. advising a married couple to be accountable to each other for something like that. that, that not that we should hide it. No, yeah, I'm not saying we should hide it from our spouses, but I think no, the but, idea of an accountability is different than, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So and I, I would, mm -hmm. well, I was going to say, I hope it goes without saying too, that your accountability partner, if it's not your spouse needs to be the same sex because, you know, I, I know that there are a lot of people that are fine praying with people of a different sex and that's fine you know we're we're not here to tell you how to lead your prayer life we kind of are right? but actually we are <laughs> but wait wait we are but uh it needs to be someone of the same sex it's just way too okay but what if you're a woman and you, and you want pastoral care and advice like is there a time where a woman could bring things to a pastor a male pastor and have it not be I think so. Wrong, weird. I I think so. Yes, on one hand, because I think that, um, that that's your pastor. As far as accountability partner, I would never want a pastor to be an accountability partner mm. if it was a male. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, but even pastoral care, I um, have heard multiple times of women, a, a woman coming with a problem to a male pastor and it turning into a situation that's that turns into infidelity mm -hmm. and so i'm not going to tell a pastor how to how to do things and i'm not going to tell mm -hmm. someone not to go to your pastor of course you need to but personally like if i were to just tell you what i would do i feel like if i had to go to my pastor for something i'd probably go to his wife or meet with both of them together first mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if i needed counsel about something that my husband wasn't involved in, I would want to have a woman there too. I would yeah. not want to meet. That's sense. my personal choice. Mm -hmm. I would want to meet one on, I wouldn't want to meet one on one with just a pastor. And especially if it had to do with a marital problem, just because I feel like mm -hmm. there's already that like rescue hero mentality yes. when yes. you're, uh -huh. you know, that's mm -hmm. my personal no, I thing. Get what you're saying. But I yeah. would never fault anyone for going to a pastor and meeting one on one. I know that's what. Yeah, it's do. probably something that. Yeah, just different situations and different uh, different hedges. I know they're sometimes called. 
Yeah. Yeah. Or, that you know, sense. because, and, and some churches I'm sure have like an open door policy or something where the door is open when you're, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, mm-hmm. but I'm just, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that's just a personal thing. But, um, but yeah, if you're just choosing an accountability partner as a friend, I would totally say pick a female if you're a female. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I'm a female. You are? Yeah. Yeah. Do you <laughs> want to be my accountability partner? I do. Yes. Okay. All right. So now you need to tell me about monkeys. How, how are the monkeys? All right. The monkeys are out of control. <laughs> Hanging from the chandeliers. <laughs> the monkey pooped all over the table. And then threw it at me. <laughs> oh. I'm praying for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. All righty. So we talked about temptation. Um, the deception, I think, is a really important thing because I think that we don't, we don't think about that as much, but it's so, especially in the story of the fall, the deception yeah. is really what but sealed the deal. And I think that that's still something that leads us astray all the time. Now, what examples do you have, or or have you heard about kind of the deception side of this? Well, like the other, the, the other part of that, that she mentioned uh, where she says that Satan minimizes the effects of the sin in your mind and maximizes the pleasure you get out of it. Mm-hmm. And hides the consequences from your view. Yeah, I don't think I could have said it better at all. That's yeah. exactly how I feel it, yeah. it works as well. Those were her words. Yeah. So minimizing the effects of the sin in your mind, yeah. maximizing the pleasure, hiding yeah. the consequences. And mm-hmm. so if we want to go on the 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 trail of infidelity, um, I I heard I've actually like, decided not to be unfaithful to my husband so I'm going to have to not go down that trail. Okay, you stay there. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go down that road, guys. We're not. Oh, oh, we're, we're just, just a metaphorical it. road. We're going to throw the the boomerang down the road. Let it go away, and it'll come back with answers. All right, all right. I'm still bummed you didn't name your dog Boomer, like you had talked about. That. Oh, so I fun. know, right? Yeah, he's a he's a retriever, boomerang, boomer. Anyway, that was my first choice. Oh, um, I'm sorry you didn't get your first choice. Are you feeling disappointed? Are you tempted to? Did we say tempted. the monkeys were going to do. Are you tempted to? To? Gosh, I don't even remember what I said at the beginning. Something about the funny <laughs> it, w- it was funny it had something to do with them being out of control yeah are your monkeys okay that, yeah they're okay on that uh, yeah I'm not worried about the name I'm not tempted <laughs> I'm not tempted to sin because of my disappointment about our dog's name no, I'm I glad like, to hear that I like his name you can um, name your monkey boomer <laughs> that's right that's right okay all right so okay. All right. So deception, deception. So if we're going to look at the example of infidelity, Mm -hmm. um, what I've heard someone say before is if you get in a situation where you're entertaining thoughts that are very seem innocent, like, Oh, I I wish my husband was more like this guy or Mm -hmm. wow. Doesn't he treat his wife nice or, you know, whatever. Um, take that thought and make yourself think it through to its logical conclusion. So think about like push it through and think, okay, so this guy is good. What if we started dating behind my husband's back? And then, and, and like say these things to yourself, what if, what if we had an affair and, um, and then, then say, what if, what if one of my kids walked in and discovered it? What, what would the look on my husband's face be when he found out Um, what would be the effects of, are split and you know all these different things um make yourself look the ugly possibilities in the face when you when you have seeds of thoughts so i don't know how healthy that is in like i don't think you should be living your life just constantly going down those those thought processes. Sure. Well, and some people have really good imaginations. Which and might make it could, worse. Would, it would make it worse. So I think, yeah, yeah. some people are going to want to avoid that. Whereas other people, yeah, if you're kind of like the um, Debbie Downer and you're, you're used to coming up with worst case scenarios, I think that that could be helpful. If you're right. like, I know for me, I'm, I'm so head in the clouds. Like I'm so good at daydreaming and just love it that that's probably not good advice for someone like me. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, or yeah, no. if you're if you're 
looking at the negative things turns into, oh, and then we live happily ever after. Right. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be good. Because, yeah, but, there is the sin is pleasurable for a time. Even the Bible says right. that. It's exactly. pleasurable for a time. Otherwise, none of us would indulge. You know, sugar is delicious. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a problem with overeating sugar. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's take that example. Let's say- Okay. Let's say food is the issue or sweets. Mm -hmm. Let's say sweets mm -hmm. are the issue. So yeah. Satan minimizes the effects of the sin in your mind. It's like, oh, I'll just have it's a little bit bad. of something, yeah. you know, Everything maximizes maximizes the pleasure. You're like, oh man, this is going to so taste good. so good. Yeah. yeah. And then hides the consequences from your view. Meaning You're not going to feel bad after you eat this. Satan takes the scale and hides it. No. <laughs> No, no. Like you're speaking my language because for mine too. Sure, this is yeah. hitting very close to home right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to taste so good. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be that bad because it's not like you're doing it every single day and you're not going to, you're not going to feel bad afterwards. And all of those are lies. Right. I'm not saying we need to be totally like, um, I was about to say aesthetic. What's the word where it's like a monk? It's not aesthetic. We don't a, need to be ascetic, ascetic, something that, like no. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you know, I, we don't need to go extreme. I'm not saying like I'm never going to eat dessert again, but I know that when I eat things that I know logically are going to leave me feeling poor, mm -hmm. I tell myself, oh, it's not going to be that bad. It's just going to be this one time. It's going to be worth it. And then I eat it. I'm like, yeah, it's never worth it. Like, I'm to where I haven't had ice cream in years. Well, actually I did. I had a couple bowls during the pandemic, but in general, like I've probably had three bowls of ice cream in the past two years because I just finally learned, you know what? It's never worth it. I'm not saying ice cream is sinful. I'm saying for my body and my metabolism, it just, it leaves me feeling too bad. But what I would tell myself is, oh, it's not going to be that bad. Right. Well, and if I look at the, you know, struggling with, with, taming my tongue with my family and being kinder, you know, minimizing the effects of sin, I think busyness can be just a total blinder. And so I'm going through my day, I'm plowing through and I just, you know, snap at them left and right. I just let, mm -hmm. let loose, maximize the pleasure. Like there yeah, is a degree a of, mm -hmm. yeah. And for someone like me that is kind of, um, I don't know if you'd call it passive aggressive, I guess, is like mm -hmm. I hold it in, but yeah. when I let it out, it makes me feel powerful in mm -hmm. a way that I don't mm -hmm. let myself be most of the time. Right. With so there's, a, there's an my, immediate reward. Yeah. yeah, there is. And mm -hmm. hides the consequences from your view. And so I think the consequences I'm not seeing in this moment of, of lashing out the mm -hmm. consequence of that, what's that, what that's doing in my child's heart and in their spirit. Right. I know. And sometimes it's sad that kids are so resilient because is. I feel like if we saw the immediate consequences, we would, we would never go down those roads. But since we don't see it immediately, it, mm -hmm. it does become easy. Yeah, no, I think that this is a good framework to go through for whatever temptation, like I'm thinking of just kind of grumbling, discontentment, you mm -hmm. know, so the deception is kind of, I deserve better. I just, you know, my circumstances are worse than what they should be. Mm -hmm. And the, so, you know, the temptation is to just grumble. There's a rewards to that kind of going back to like that martyr syndrome, like, look at how much I'm suffering, you know, cause I've got mosquito bites on my arm. Not a, not a big deal, but there's a little bit of, like you said, it feels powerful to feel like you're the victim, which is totally backwards because when you're the victim, you're powerless, but there's this false sense of power. Yep. And like you're yeah. holding the cards and exactly. you're owed. Yeah. Yeah, now life owes me something because, oh, look, I've got a hole in my screen. So I'm, you know, I, I deserve to be so much happier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could totally see this framework being really useful for whatever your particular struggle is, you know. Mm -hmm. And then for me, going back to what you were saying, okay, so take it to its logical conclusion. So I grumble mm -hmm. and hate the new living situation and hate where we are. And I remain unhappy for as long as we're here. Well, that's stupid. Right. <laughs> What's the point in that? Yeah. And for me, you know, talking about the kids, I, I continue to lash out at them. I continue to um, 
you know, say hurtful things. And then I'm like chiseling away at our relationship and at their yeah. self-worth and the way that they view mm. themselves, you know, for yeah. the long term. Yeah. Well, in terms of like how to prepare for this and how to, one thing that comes to my mind is just praying, like you said, for God to shed light, like help us mm -hmm. to see, I guess, all of the opposites of what Satan does. So right. number one, pray that God, that God would maximize the effects of the sin in our minds, minimize the pleasure because of the, the horror <laughs> that we feel when we realize the damage right. it's doing. Mm -hmm. and open our eyes to the consequences and to the long-term possible consequences. For sure. And that's really, really useful to yeah. just, yeah. Like In that truth. sense, yeah, I think that looking at the long-term negative consequences is really useful, um, you know, not to where it backfires. And like you said, and then we live happily ever after. But when you, <laughs> you do kind of be like, okay, this, this is never going to end well. Mm -hmm. And there's always going to be consequences. And I think it's in Proverbs. It just says, be, be sure your sins will find you out. And they will. And I think a great prayer to pray like for yourself and for your kids is that like your sins will get you in trouble sooner rather than later. Yeah, you know, like it's kind of like what we were talking about with kids being so resilient. So you feel like it's no big deal to keep yelling or, mm -hmm. or things. Um, it's easier to see the immediate consequences than to just kind of persist, and and then it just makes that power of that sin and temptation so much stronger. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I'm gonna have to sign off before too long. Okay. And it's to we could make this a two-parter or we could wrap up here we'll just wrap up real quick because the very last one is accusation where satan flips the script and it's like now you're the problem Look now there's you shame did. you yeah. label yourself so it's like he gets you twice you fall into the trap yes, of sin yeah and then mm -hmm. you're remorseful because you've got the holy spirit that's letting you know or even people that mm -hmm. don't just realizing wow either seeing the consequence or feeling bad or you mm -hmm. know going out mm -hmm. and partying and having a hangover the next day and then being like i shouldn't mm -hmm. have done that whatever it right. is that that's the problem um you know it's but as believers satan gives us this accusation and and so that is like if you've already done the sin if you've already gotten into that cycle you can still get out. I think that's the bottom line. When, when you don't right. give into the accusation, because we need to, I think this is where affirmations come in handy, repeating scripture sure. to yourself about who you are in Christ and how your sins are as far as the East is from the West. And, um, you know, making a habit of confession, I think can help with this step too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. having that prayer partner or that accountability partner where you just kind of constantly keeping check of like, what are my thoughts? What's my thought life like so that you can catch things before you get into the cycle of sinning and then being mm -hmm. ashamed. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah but, and I think not making that sin your identity, because yes. if you say to yourself, yes, I'm a smoker, I can't help it. Yeah. You know, or, or whatever it is. And, and again, most of these things in and of themselves aren't inherently sinful, but when you're being, um, you're being, when they're holding that power over you, that's when they become sinful. And it's so easy for us to accept that as our identity. I am a grumpy mom who yells at my kids. Right. Well, then you're going to act like a grumpy mom who yells at your kids. So, right. you know, making sure that you don't embrace the sinfulness as part of your identity, I think is really important too. And that's why I think it's really important what we say about ourselves, yep. you know? So instead of saying, I'm, I'm a fat food addict who can't say no to sweets. You say, I am a child of God who has been given the power of the Holy Spirit to not, uh, not give in to addictions or, you know, whatever you want to say that, that wasn't quite mm -hmm. as polished as I was hoping, but you get what I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. And mm -hmm. again, not to say there is a time though, we're not saying that this strategy of self-help and, and scripture mm -hmm. reading is going to always help if you are physically addicted to something. Oh, so for sure. That's there's a, good, a time I'm really glad you brought that up. when you need to seek help for addictions. And yes. that is, yeah, absolutely. We're not, we're not trying to take the place of professional help. So if you are in a mm -hmm. cycle 
of shame because of an addiction, Mm -hmm. you need to find help and not just rely on yourself or your friends to, you know, keep you accountable. You might need professional intervention. So glad you brought that up. Yes. And, and how nice that we live in a time where those types of services are available. Yes. Cool. Well, if you're ready, let's, let's close with our blessing and benediction. And here's a reminder that you guys can uh, download our warrior to warrior. That's so hard to say. I don't think I we know. thought through that warrior I to didn't. warrior online prayer retreat at prayingchristianwomen.com slash warrior, like the, the fighty guy, warrior. Yes. <laughs> um, it's an hour long workshop that talks you through some practical exercises to take your fears, your worries, your anxieties, turn them into prayer. Um, really powerful stuff. So again, prayingchristianwomen.com slash warrior. And now let's close with our blessing and benediction. May God preserve you on the day of temptation and give you full victory over sin. May no transgression have dominion over you, for he who is faithful will give you a way out of temptation that you may stand up under it. Sin shall not be your master so that you obey its evil desires. Instead, may the spirit who gives us life set you free from the passions and desires that wage war against your soul, for you are not under law, but under grace. That was totally random. Thank you, I Lord, for that. that yeah. was, I just cut and pasted from our yeah. list. So that's just a huge... Very appropriate for, for today's topic. Yep, that is a God wink. So thank you, God, for that. Our benediction is Romans fifteen thirteen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Oh, I have two. I'm going to give you a second benediction, y'all, oh. just because <laughs> there are two really listed. Nice. All right. Romans 15, 33, may the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Bye.